Hello everyone and welcome to another StarCraft 2 replay cast with me, Buddha. This is once again from the ESEA tournament. It is from the same series of games, I guess, because the ESEA tournament is a $5,000 prize pool tournament featuring a lot of big name houses. It is a best of five of best of threes. So this is another matchup between two players of Check 6 and Kiwi Clone. And it is just another best of three series from that matchup. Hopefully you followed that. So this one will actually be Check 6 Mystique versus Caliber from Kiwi Clone team. And I don't know, once again, I don't... I haven't seen these players play before. So we are expecting pretty much anything. You can see that Mystique is actually going for an 11 pool. 11 pool by Mystique. This might actually be pretty dangerous considering Caliber looks like he's going for a very fast expand. Anyways, these two players are actually duking it out um, for their teams because it is a team event and every team sets up five players and every player, every matchup plays a best of three. So when you win your best of three, you give one point to your team and it's the first team to reach three that wins the point for that week. The tournament goes on for eight weeks and I will be casting as many games as I can, but there are a lot of games. Only this week I've had maybe like 15 games sent to me that I'm going to try and cast, but I am going to fail. As well as I'll be casting uh, live games tonight at 6 p.m. EST in if you want to, to join in on Team Liquid, just look for the stream. It will be awesome. Now, a few Lings already out on the field. Four Lings already out. Going to kill that probe. And I don't know if this is actually going to do any kind of damage. He does not know where his opponent is. Or at least I don't think he does. He does not. He does not know where his opponent is. His opponent can just wall this off. One cannon will be able to just kill four lings pretty easily. He is now expanding behind this, so I guess it was just being safe for um, for that cannon rush. He still has no gas, so he's not expecting, he has no intention of going all in from here, uh, because an all in would need, require at least a ling speed just to get that surround so much quicker, and lings are pretty much useless to bust without ling speed. Anyways, he is, uh, though, going to be able to get that queen out at least that much faster, as well as that second queen be able to sp start spreading that creep, get a second base going, and at least he is not going to fall behind that much on the harvester count, as uh, Zerg players usually do in a ZVP matchup when the Protoss goes for an expansion first. I bet all you low-level players did not know that. In the first minutes of a ZVP, the Protoss actually has more Harvesters. It is very normal. You can see that the Zerg in this game actually is very, very close to the Protoss player. Actually, one Harvester ahead, now one behind, closing up that gap, and that is not usually how it goes. Usually, the Protoss player has 24, and the Zerg has about 20 Harvesters, and it's only when the second base and the second queen starts producing that much larva that the drones uh, the drone count actually goes shooting up and the zerg player comes back and just overwhelms eventually the protoss player because we all know zergs just always win now meanwhile caliber is going for two gates one forge nothing too weird at this point he is getting three gases pretty quickly uh, so it is still up to for... It is still a, a good guess about what's going to happen. One Zealot is going to walk inside the main base. Not a wise idea as he will die. Nice drone, nice Ling Micro pulling back on those two injured Lings. He is actually not even going to lose a single Zergling there. Pulling back these two Zerglings with 6 HP each. Now these Lings are going to stay active and actually go destroy these rocks. Great choice by Mystique. It wants that third base as fast as he can. You know, all this sneaky probe here is just chilling. I do think that 
if this does not get spouted, it can actually play a pretty big, it can actually be a pretty big deal in the later games. He can actually just warp in units here inside the main base, do that much more damage, and it is so annoying for a Zerg player to just find a pylon, a straight pylon, warping in units inside your main base. You have to pull back, take care of that, you can't harass, you can't use your uni units for, say, taking down rocks for gaining map control, and really it is pretty annoying. The Harvester count is now 50 Harvesters against just 37 for the Protoss player, and I don't think that Mystique actually produced any drones, uh, any other units than drones at this point, besides those four initial links. Uh, he has just been droning up like crazy. His lair is now almost done. This Overlord gonna take a peek. What did he see? He actually saw the robotics facility finishing up, but not anything else. Although that is already a good information, at least. He is going for Twilight Council, so we might be seeing some blink action, although this map doesn't really favor... Uh, Blink Stalkers as much as other maps like Shakuro's Plateau or um, even Metalopolis would. Although Blink Stalkers are always a viable option no matter what the map is because it is just so powerful. These links are going to start gaining map control, just keeping a tab on his opponent caliber. One Overseer making his way inside the main base. Dropping that poor little changeling who just died freely and the overseer actually survives right now. And this might be one of the last times we see overseers because apparently they are gone in the expansion. So overseer, we are not going to be seeing much of you anyways. This small group of army of uh, units is actually in danger of getting surrounded if they move out. So I like this link positioning, being able to prevent the small group of units from actually destroying the rocks. Uh, it is a small, tiny victory, but everything counts. Every tiny win counts in these very, very, very high level games. I love the creep spread here. It is very, very active. I mean, look at the amount of creep tumors that Extra Queen is really doing its job, pooping out creep everywhere. And it does look like uh, Mystique is going to go for another f a very fast fourth base, so basically double expanding it is right as the third base finishes, he is going to start the fourth base. Is he going to make me regret saying this? Anyways, it does not matter, but if he actually starts this fourth, fourth base, he has to be careful about this probe. I mean, the Caliber does have it selected. He is making a pylon, and does Mystique actually see this? He should. He does see this. Will he pay attention and actually... I think he's distracted right now by this big group of stalkers. He does not have many links. He does have a couple of infestors out with fungal, so he has to lock this down. I like the split on these stalkers from Caliber. Splitting the stalkers in two groups will actually force the double fungal on the groups and be able to clean this up had he kept all these stalkers in one group he would have actually been fungled in place in one big chunk and those fungals would have done so much more damage but now he can safely walk home back home with half his stalkers and a zealot now being warped in inside the main base and this is what i was talking about with this pylon and the observer I mean, right now it didn't do that much damage, but it is still very annoying, especially when DTs are out inside the main base. The Dark Shrine has actually finished while we were not paying attention, and now DTs are inside the main base doing uh, the, all the damage that they can. Five workers killed, not that bad, but if he can actually kill another infestor, that, another infestor that might actually be worth it. These DTs are being annoying. I mean, there is an Overseer right here, but he is not moving it right now. And is there any other DTs? Now this pylon finally going down. He could have actually prevented a lot of hurt there. Missed Fungal on the DT. Now bringing the Overseer. Going to finally be able to catch all of these and just deal with it. But some 11 workers skills killed still it does mean that the protoss is ahead despite not having the third base just yet he is ahead in harvester count and now warping in more zealots here at the 
fourth base. I thought Lings were taking care of this. Apparently not. That did not even cancel, so that was 350 more minerals lost, and even then, he is not going to be able to clean up all these zealots. That is just a pain in the but for Mystique having to deal with that, and that pylon has definitely, definitely paid for itself at this point. Now, finally going to be able, uh, we will watch it just to make sure that this pylon actually dies. There it goes. And now, finally taking care of that pylon, and I really have to give the advantage to Calibre at this point. He is getting his third base, even though this third base is a bit late. A bit later than usually, we usually see a third base. He has done a lot of damage. He has harassed Mystique. He has prevented Mystique from harassing himself, from denying the third base, from doing any kind of serious damage anyways. More DTs are going to go for the third base and three DTs, four DTs are actually way enough to kill two queens and they might actually be able to take down the hatchery at this point. DTs do so much damage, there they go, starting to hack away at the hatchery and really Mystique has to bring all his army back so fast, he is not going to be able to get it. Fungals going down on the DTs, being able to clean that up, but now he is only mining from two bases. Meanwhile, the Protoss player has finally finished his third base and now he is mining from all three bases. Although the main and the expansion are close to being mined now, especially the main, I mean, the Zerg player at this point is just mining from his almost mined out expansion and his uh, main base and his expansion, and really it is not looking pretty. It was 122 to 131 supply. These links are going to try and do some kind of damage at third base. This is pretty dangerous. He needs to do a lot of damage. He needs to be careful though. There are two Templars without Storm. So not that bad. Warping into an Archon. Archons do so much damage to Lings. It is not very fun to witness. 15, 17 workers killed. 20 workers killed. But even though he killed 20 workers, he did not kill any army or almost no army. These infestors are going to try and run away. I don't think they will be able to because there isn't a server and they are very, very slow underground. There they go, being chased down. And even though he killed 20 workers, at this point he has no army left. He is producing 44 links, but links is not what you need against this army composition. I mean, links are very good against immortals and stalkers, but there is there are so many zealots with plus two weapons as well as this so crucial Archon. Archons, you need about a million links to kill an Archon just because of the splash damage. It does so much damage. 43 damage to bio and these links only have 45 health, uh, 35 health. So they basically one shot about five links. That is amazing and this is the final engagement. It is not even the best surround and the blink Stalker's blinking back. There it is, the GG, and we are going into game two. Caliber taking a game from Mystique in this best of three series of the best of five series of Kiwi Clones versus Check Six. So tune in for game two.